Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel All About Whale Essay. In this video, we are going to discuss about implementation of flip-flops using multiplexers. So let us try to understand how to implement your flip-flops using multiplexers. So let us try to implement your first type of flip-flop which is nothing but our SR flip-flop using MUX. Let us see how to implement this. Now, uh, first of all, for implementing this uh, flip-flop using multiplexer, I am going to draw the truth table. So, of my SR flip-flop, SR and output QN and QN bar. So, if it is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, this is nothing but hold condition and this is my reset condition. And this is my set condition and this is don't care condition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider this only three cases that is set condition, hold condition, set condition and reset condition. And I'm not going to consider this particular case. I'm not going to implement this. So I'm going to implement this three cases. Now how to implement this? So from here we can observe the logic. So whenever your S is equal to zero, then if your r is equal to 0, it is a hold condition. So whenever your s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 0, it is a hold condition. And whenever your s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1, it is a reset condition. So here the value of s is constant and the value of r is changing. So we can take r as one of the select line of multiplexer and we can uh, design it. Now coming to this s is equal to 1, we have only one combination. If your s is equal to 1, then simply your output is equal to 1, okay? And whenever your s is equal to 0, we are depending upon your r. So we can take two multiplexes for designing this. So let us see the circuit diagram, how it is going to look. So this is one multiplexer which we are going to consider and this is my r. Now, if my select line r is equal to 0, then what we have, if our r is equal to 0, then it is it should be a hold condition, okay? And let me draw one more multiplexer here and this select line is equal to S and from this output is our QN. So what I'm doing, if my R is equal to 0, then the first pin of this multiplexer should be provided by our output. And whenever my R is equal to 1, I can see from the truth table, whenever my R is equal to 1, then my output is equal to 0. So that's why I'm going to provide 0 here. And this is my output. Now, and in this particular case, when S is equal to 0, I'm considering the outputs from the first multiplexer. If my S is equal to 0, I'm depending upon the values of my R for getting my output. So that means if my S is equal to 0, I will connect this multiplexer output to the first pin of this multiplexer. And if my S is equal to 1, and if my S is equal to 1, then uh, my output is simply it is equal to 1. So that's why what I'm going to do, I'm going to provide 1 here. So this is my SR latch using two cross one multiplexes. And you can verify also if my R is equal to zero and S is equal to zero. Let us take this condition. If my S is equal to zero and R is equal to zero, then this output will be traveling to the input and it is again coming back to the output. So my output QN plus one is QN itself. And let's say if my S is equal to zero and R is equal to one. If my S is equal to zero and R is equal to one. Then what is the condition? If S is equal to 0, I'm going to select this pin. And if my R is equal to 1, then I'm going to take this input. So my QN plus 1 is equal to simply it is equal to 0. And let's say if my S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 0, then what is going to happen? If my S is equal to 1, then I'm going to take this input. So my QN plus 1 is equal to 1. So these are my working of my uh, SR latch using 2 cross 1 multiplexer. Now let us implement uh, this. So this is working of my SR flip-flop using two cross one multiplexer. And let us try to implement uh, a SR flip-flop. That is, we are having a clock. Let us try to implement that. So for this uh, implementation of SR flip-flop, that is with the clock, I'm going to take a four cross one max. That is, it is going to have two select lines and four inputs. These are my two select lines. And these are my four inputs, which I'm going to consider. Now, 
from the truth table we can see if my clock s and r and q n plus 1 if my clock is equal to 0 whatever may be the values of your s and r it will be holding the previous state that is it is a latch condition so i am going to give clock here s r here and i am going to take clock here and s here so if my clock is equal to 0 whatever may be the value of your select line other input your uh, output is your output is nothing but latch condition so this output i am going to connect it to over here and for 0 1 also same condition if it is 0 0 also same condition and if it is 0 1 also same condition so i am going to connect this output to the second pin also now if clock is equal to 1 and r is equal to 0 if my clock is equal to 1 and r is equal to 0 then i need to select this second pin now if your r is equal to 0 from the previous circuit we can see that if your r is equal to 0 then also you are holding the previous state so that's why i'm connecting this one and if my r is equal to 1 then from the previous connection we can see it is nothing but it is equal to 0 now coming to this particular case we are going to do the same thing so this output is connected to first input and it is also connected to second one if your clock is equal to 0 then your output should be simply uh, propagated to the input that is nothing but our latch condition that we are drawing if your clock is equal to 0 but if your clock is equal to 1 and s is equal to 0 clock is equal to 1 and s is equal to 0 you can prefer the you can refer the previous diagram what is in the previous diagram if s is equal to 0 again you are taking the previous multiplexer output only. i am going to do the same thing but if your s is equal to 1 from the previous diagram what we can see we have given 1 that's it so this is how we are going to design a sr flip flop using 4 cross 1 multiplexer so what is uh, the approach here is first design a 2 cross 1 mux first design a simple uh, functionality of your sr flip flop using 2 cross 1 mux without considering the clock and if you find your functionality is correct then go to 4 cross 1 mux and first first two pins just simply connect the output to the input of the first multiplexer in the case of first multiplexer and in the case of second multiplexer connect the two pins directly from the output of your first multiplexer and from the third pin just follow the previous diagrams in the in the first multiplexer also from the third pin just follow the first multiplexer diagram and in the second multiplexer also from the third and fourth pin just follow the previous diagram of multiplexer that's it so this is how we are going to design our sr flip flop using 4 cross 1 mux now let us try to design our jk flip flop using 4 cross 1 mux first of all let me draw the diagram uh, first of all let me draw the true table of this jk flip flop jk qn this is my output so if my j is equal to 0 k is equal to 0 it is a hold condition and if it is 0 1 it is a reset condition and 1 0 it is a set condition and if it is 1 1 it is a toggle condition now if it is 0 0 it is a hold condition and 0 1 it is a uh, reset condition and in these two cases we can see our value of j is equal to 0 our value of j is equal to 0 and in these two cases we can see our value of j is equal to 1 and if the value of j is equal to 0 depending upon the value of k we are getting the output here in this case qn qn plus 1 is equal to qn and in this case qn plus 1 is equal to 0 and here if your j is equal to 1 again depending upon the value of k we are getting our uh, outputs here in this case qn plus 1 is equal to 1 and in this case qn plus 1 is equal to qn bar okay now let us try to understand in the previous case what was happening in the first table in the first scenario whenever your s is equal to 0 depending upon the value of r we are getting our output and when your s is equal to 1 we are not uh, caring about your r we are just taking our output as 1 but in this case depending upon the value of uh, depending upon the value of k in both the scenarios when your j is equal to 0 depending upon the value of k we are getting one set of values and depending upon the value of k whenever your j is equal to 1 we are getting one set of values so in this particular case let us see how many multiplexers should we need should we take and how to draw this circuit let us try to understand so i'm going to take one multiplexer and keeping the select line as k and first i'm trying to implement this without clock then i will use with the clock and here i'm going to take j and this is 0 1 this is my output 0 1 and this is my output 
and if my k is equal to 0 i can know from this diagram that k is equal to 0 output will be latch to the input there is a latch condition and if my k is equal to 1 then i can see that my output is equal to 0 so i will give 0 here so i will get 0 here now this output is connected to the first pin of your second multiplexer that means if your j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0 then output is simply propagated to the input and if your j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 1 you are going to get your output as 0 now if your j is equal to 1 again you should depend upon the value of k here you from the table also you can see if your j is equal to 1 you are again depending upon the value of k for getting your output now how to design this if your j is equal to, uh, if your j is equal to 1 and k depending upon the value of k so you need one more multiplexer here. and this output will be corrected over here now if your j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 0 that means this particular pin so what should be your output it should be simply 1 so i am going to connect here 1 and if your j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1 then this input will be connected to qn bar it will be connected to qn bar it is nothing but our toggle condition i will keep a bubble here so this is nothing but my jk latch using 2 cross 1 max so if you can see j is equal to 0 k is equal to 0 hold the condition is satisfied j is equal to 1 k is equal to j is equal to 0 k is equal to 1 that condition also satisfied now let us take one more condition that is j is equal to 1 k is equal to 0 what is happening j is equal to 1 means we are taking the output from this multiplexer and k is equal to 0 means we are taking this input that means we are getting at output 1 and if you are taking j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1 that what is happening j is equal to 1 means this output and uh, k is equal to 1 means we are just simply taking the complement of our output we are just taking the complement of our output that's it so this is how we are going to build a jk latch using our 2 cross 1 marks now let us try to implement this with the help of clock so for that i am going to take 4 cross 1 marks this is my clock and this is my key and this is my multiplexer clock and g and one more multiplexer so please remember just uh, follow the previous diagram that's it and uh, just uh, consider the uh, clock as your extra pin with four inputs four inputs and four inputs now whenever your clock is equal to zero we already know that output will be just connected to your input for these two cases your output will be connected to the input because if your clock is equal to i will write down here clock k 0 0 0 1 in these two cases your clock is equal to 0 so that's why your output is simply connected to the input and whenever your clock is 1 then only you are going to consider your k okay if your k is equal to 0 what happen, what is happening if your k is equal to 0 again you are connecting your output to input that is what we are doing here also and what happening what happens if your k is equal to 1 we are just simply connecting 0 that is what i have written here now in this particular case if your clock is equal to 0 then this output is connected to this two pins that is just output is simply forwarded to the input and if your clock is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 0 1 in these two cases this output of the first multiplexer is connected to the inputs and if your clock is equal to 1 and j is equal to 0 you can refer this previous diagram what is happening if your j is equal to 0 this first multiplexer output is connected to the first pin so i'm going to do the same thing and if your j is equal to 1 what were you doing this output is given to this multiplexer pin that's it and in this case also if your clock is equal to 0 clock k if your clock is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0 your output is simply connected to the input and which output should you connect you should connect this output that is qn i am writing here you should connect qn and qn here and if your clock is equal to 1 and k is equal to 0 that means you should connect 1 you can refer the previous you can refer the previous diagram you should connect 1 here and here you will connect qn bar so this is how we are going to develop a jk flip flop using clock so this is how we are going to develop a jk flip flop using 4 cross 1 multiplexer now let us try to understand your t flip flop now let us try to understand how to implement your d flip flop 
So for implementing a D flip flop, I'm going to take a simple two cross one max. And here I'm going to take a clock. And if this clock is equal to zero, then it is a latch. And if my clock is equal to one, then whatever my input is given, I'm going to get my same output. So this is how I'm going to implement my D flip flop. Now you try how to implement the T flip flop. Just uh, try how to implement a T flip flop and uh, please let me know in our next videos.